Hey guys, um, I'm going to show you a few techniques that you're going to need to know how to use so that you can do your sculptures. So this is where I'm at right now. I have my wire armature finished and I've put um, the tin foil to add mass onto my sculpture and a little bit of tape is just there for right now to kind of hold that tin foil in place, but I can remove that later. One of the first things that you'll want to think about is um, your sculpture might be able to just be totally freestanding on its own, but for me, I ended up needing to put it on a cardboard base and I had to um, secure, um, I have kind of like a circle on the bottom, but then a wire going up and I had to secure it onto the cardboard with some tape. So um, there are some squares of um, mat board, black mat board on the counter in the art room and you can use those either by taping it on or I actually even put out some hole punches. You could punch a hole in there and then fasten it on with wire. Um, that's up to you. The other thing I want to show you some just really basic wire techniques. So please do not cut the wire with scissors. You need to use wire cutters and you use the back end here to cut them. Okay. so. To connect two pieces of wire together, you'll want to crisscross them, and then you can either use your fingers or use the pliers to curl it over. Ugh, this isn't working out very well, showing you guys. It's kind of small. Okay, so crisscross, and then there's a technique called crimping. And crimping is where you just kind of squeeze that little, see how it's loose right now? You'll want to squeeze it together by just putting the pliers on and give it a really good grip. So it's called crimping, and that's going to make all of your attachments really strong. Okay? Um, and then you could always trim off or bend down any extra little wire sticking out. There you go, got that nice and crimped now. Um, another thing that you can use if you feel like um, you attach it and it's like sliding around up and down a whole lot is just take a little bit of masking tape. And this is some blue painter's tape, but it would work fine with regular stuff. Tear a long thin strip and then you can kind of crisscross applesauce in there to and that could be kind of nice too if there's any real sharp pointy areas but it's not necessary but you can always use that if you need to so for example I had to use that technique up here where the bow and the arrow meet um, to keep that from sliding around a little bit okay so next I'm gonna angle this down I'll show you how I'll do the plaster. Um, so the plaster is, um, it's already kind of like embedded in these rolls of gauze. And I highly, highly, highly recommend that you pre-cut little strips. And I like using little strips because my sculpture is small. So pre-cut them. And if you guys could just dedicate a couple of pairs of scissors for plaster, that would be great because they're pretty rough on scissors. All right, and then you'll also need a bowl of water or a bucket of water. Um, and please don't dump plaster water down the sink. All right, now, I need to choose where I'm going to start with this. And I have thought about it, and I'm definitely gonna start at the bottom. And the reason why is because once I start adding plaster to it, I'm adding weight. And I don't want to add weight to the top and make her really top heavy while the bottom's still flimsy. So. I'm going to start from the bottom up. So I'm going to move this off to the side because I don't want to be dripping water on top of the plaster strips because they'll all fuse together. So keep those to that side. Take a plaster strip. A lot of you guys have probably used this material before. Submerge it in the water, pull it up, and then run your two fingers down to get off excess strips. Okay. And then just kind of start to place these down. I'm going to add a bunch on for now. 
and then I'll smooth it out once it's on there. And I'm trying to lay it down so that, let me see if I can move this a little closer. Yeah, I'm trying to lay it down so that it's not all wrinkly. Unless if that's the texture that you're going for. Of course, there's no super hard rules with this. Some of the artists like Rodan and Giacometti they were really into adding a kind of rough texture to their pieces. And some artists like a really smooth finish. Okay, so once it's on there, then you can, like I said, choose if you want it to be rough or smooth but you can use your fingers to um, <clears throat> smooth out this gauze-like pattern in there. And you can get it super smooth if you're careful. Okay, so that's it. Um, <laughs> it's that simple. I'm gonna do a quick time-lapse next of me adding the plaster going all the way up my sculpture. Okay, so now I have all of the plaster on my sculpture, but as you can see, there's some areas that are a little bit less than how smooth I want them to be, and you can see how the upper leg is kind of a little skinnier than the lower leg. So you can start adding more mass to the sculpture with the plaster strips as well. So you just be, you know, adding extra layers wherever you want it to be thicker just so long as it's still gonna balance. Um, so again, I can add more through here. It's gonna add a little bit more through her waist. Um, and then just basically add another layer maybe to the upper arms and just add a layer in general to start to smooth things out. Um, but this is good for my first layer. Um, I definitely don't wanna add more here. I wanna leave that thin but I'd let that dry before I add the next layer. Okay, so that's all. Have fun. Happy sculpting. Bye.